Hello everybody, boy do I have a treat for you guys today, no it's not a power supply review or anything like that, silly I don't do those things, um, let's get this out of the box and I'll show you what I mean. Alright, so the last time I worked on one of these cards, or something similar to this, was in 2019. <laughs> Uh, granted, it is an oldie, but goodie. Uh, this is the Titan Z. Um, it looks like it has been opened before. So it's a, basically, if you don't know, if you're not familiar with this, um, <clears throat> with this card here, as you can see there, Titan Z. Um, if you're not familiar with this stuff, uh, it's a dual GPU setup, so... Back in the days when AMD and NVIDIA were doing this type of stuff. So there's basically two GPUs, two GPU cores and memory um, connected via bridge, SLI bridge, on board the graphics card. So that's essentially what this is. I remember the first dual GPU core uh, graphics card that I had was the, I think it was called the GTX 295. And that was... Boy, that was a long time ago. I think it was a 295. I don't remember exactly. Um, and then a 690, GTX, GTX 690, which I repaired in 2019. Man, that's over six years ago. Um, and now, <laughs> this thing is a legend. So, all right. Basically, what's going on here, what the customer is saying, is that um, the card... Um, apparently it has no display. Uh, display port doesn't work, but that's not why it's here. Uh, we only got HDMI that works. Um, customer said that this card works. Uh, it turns on. It is it is recognized um, in Windows and in the BIOS, but it is recognized only as a display output. You know, like a default display output. It doesn't. Uh, allow for the driver to kick in. He says that after a while, when the driver does kick in, it basically crashes it. You know, there's no display. So uh, let's go ahead and run it through the uh, paces here and see what's going on now. That right there, that you see there, to me that's a bad sign because um, this is not, these are gap fillers, okay? And yeah, thermal pads are also called gap fillers, but this type of gap filler here, uh, it's not the best of quality. Um, I only use these things on parts, on areas that are not really that important. Like, um, it, not, not, not that they're not important, but that they're not as crucial. Um, uh, okay, so, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and take this apart. And man, do I have... Oh, man. Okay. Um, there's so many screws with this thing. It's ridiculous. But uh, we'll make the best out of it, I guess. Okay, so can we take this back plate off now? Yeah, we can. And yeah, as you can see there, this is what I mean. Like, um, the problem with this thermal pads is that they're very rigid. They're very like, how do you say, uh, stiff. And you putting these pads here and then tying them down upon SMDs and things like that, these pads and just by looking at them just by looking at them they're exerting a lot of pressure a lot of pressure on those smds so this is this can cause just this by itself can cause so much damage to your gpu because these pads are not designed for this type of use they're in fact i'll go as far as say that like this is the worst thing that you can do to your gpu here you should be using a, something a, a lot less um, uh, hard than this. Um, some silicone pads, you know, better quality uh, than, than this stuff. Um, and these are Arctic cooling pads. I'm pretty familiar with these also. And they're very stiff. These are very stiff pads. And I would not use them for this purpose here either. Um, especially over memory because they're not forgiving. They're very stiff and very uh, problematic if uh, applied in the wrong places. 
Um, so let's just go ahead and start removing these things here. And you can already tell what I was talking about. There's so many memory chips here um, that NVMT and mats have trouble. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's just look at that. So memory chips here, memory chips here. Uh, and your SLI bridge is on the other side of this here. And that's what we're going to be taking a look at here in a moment. And okay, so let's just see if we can get in there now. We may have to remove, yeah, I think so. We need to remove this here. And I just forgot something. I did this backwards because I was supposed to take um, um, some measurements here, take some numbers, but you know what? It's too late already. So, oh no. Oh no, no. Oh man. Holy cow, okay. Oh boy, okay. Then I can see why this is perhaps having so much trouble or he's experiencing problems with this because these pads are unsuitable for this and I, I don't wanna <laughs> bash on the customer. I, I don't wanna do that, but maybe he's not, he, he didn't know, but these pads are not, they're not your best friend. If you see these on eBay or AliExpress, stay away from this crap. Don't use these things. Not only are they not the best uh, in thermal transfer, like thermal conductivity, uh, but they're also very, very stiff. Like the hard, their hardness is it's ridiculous. So not good for this here. Maybe on the back over some, um, over the back of the VRM where there's actually nothing there. Yeah, I would use this, but not actual SMDs or surface mounted devices such as memory and you know other components i will not use these pads here and yes i'm going i'm going down hard on these things because uh, i from experience i can tell you these these things cause more problems more trouble than they do good and i know some of you may be out there saying oh i use those and you know i never had any issues <laughs> good for you lucky you you got a trophy coming, but um, it hasn't been my experience at all. Um, and uh, yeah, just if you want, if you care about this stuff, it's, you know, I would suggest you spend the extra money on better thermal pads. Okay, um, I'm going to go ahead and clean this up real quick, and then we'll get into the nitty gritty of things here. Okay, so here you have your SLI bridge. This is what connects, uh, logically, what connects these two cores uh, so they can work um, uh, together along with all these memory chips, front and back. Um, very intricate setup. And the, the latest one with the dual chip, the dual, latest car with the dual chip that I've seen was uh, one that is on Durbauer's channel. Um, it was two 6800 RX 26800 cards or, or cores on a single PCB. Um, that's the last one that I, or the latest one that I have seen. I, I don't know that there are any others um, still being made. So very interesting that they did this back in the days. Uh, but anyway, okay, let's start checking some numbers here. Tells you what kind of... Uh, quality of technician I am, right? Mm-hmm. Doing things backwards. <laughs> Should have done this before I took the card. What are you thinking sending your card over here? Man. Anyway, I was pretty excited when I um, when I heard that this thing was, uh, you know, coming. So let's check. No. Place you here. Or somewhere where you guys can see. And the customer said that this was uh, safe to plug in, so I don't doubt him, but it's good practice to always check yourself. Okay, kilo ohms and 12 volts, 3.3. That looks. Uh, this is going to be tricky because you have two cards, so yeah. 
data lines, mega ohms. Yeah, okay. And our PEX reset. We'll reverse the leads here. Mega ohms, clock, plus or minus. Looking good. Okay. So uh, let's give the card a visual inspection. Uh, because a lot of times, just by looking at the card closely, you can find a lot of, uh, you can make your job a, a lot easier. All right, my peeps. So, quick update. And this is something that I missed when I first was taking this thing apart. But uh, I'm sure you guys can probably see that there. In the corner. Yep, it's a uh, cracked crystal. And not just this corner here. As you can see there but also here and you can see a lot of scratches here this thing has been uh, damaged and treated pretty badly this corner is also cracked and this is typically where all the uncore the you know the um, the uncore part memory control that stuff is located on this GPU um, the other corners look okay with certain scratches on it, but uh, this one here it does look like it's also cracked, maybe. I think there's a line there. I don't know if you guys can see that line there, bottom right, and that cor very cor corner there. Uh, yeah, there's a little, I don't know if I can get it any closer. Let me try. But uh, this is pretty sad because this basically halts everything that I'm doing. I'm not going to, I can't go any further than this. So, um, yeah, it is cracked. You can see it right there, clearly. So, four corners of this GPU die are cracked. I'm, I'm surprised that this thing even booted, or kind of booted. Ah, oh, man. Okay, well, RIP. Uh, very sad. I was about to uh, replace those caps there too that are missing, but this just uh, changes everything. You can see that there. I feel bad for the customer because I was really looking forward to uh, working with him, you know, and helping this or helping him with this special card. I think it is a special card. Uh, it's a relic, you know. So. That's it. That's all I have for today. Uh, this ends the video. I uh, hope you guys somehow, some way like this. And I'll see you on the next one. You don't have to subscribe if you don't want to. <laughs> Bye, guys. Take care.